While in Miami, we came across a new boat company looking to transform perceptions of electric boats, namely their performance. Piotr Zinn was kind enough to provide a few details before taking us out for a spin. So this is our power pack. Uh, this is a BMW i3 battery that uh, Torquedo marinizes, which means they put this uh, really uh, awesome cooling system for us. This is a 40 kilowatt battery. That gives us a range of about an 80 to 100 miles for a typical day on the water. Wait a minute, did he say 80 to 100 miles? More on that in a bit. So this is our drivetrain. This is the big part over here. You can see this big thrust bearing. This is actually what takes all this torque uh, and keeps the shaft from pushing it into the motor. As you can see, when we say all carbon fiber, the boat is all carbon fiber. Light is right. The hull weighs less than 350 pounds. We're told the carbon motor cover weighs 125 grams. Piotr is measuring in grams? Here, even our hinge is carbon fiber. We build it to keep it light and stiff, just like every other part of the boat. You can see that we have chargers on uh, each side. Each one of those is a 3.3 kilowatt charger, and they're pretty smart. So all you need to do is to hook it up to the power, and uh, we'll take it from there. That's our connection box. This is the brains of the boat. And if you look down there, that's the 55 kilowatt torpedo motor. After explaining some of the details, Piotr offered to take us out for a ride. It didn't take long to warm up the motor. No, 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 it's uh, a <laughs> zero warm up. We literally just took the cover off the boat and we're ready to go. What inspired this idea? Why did you just start a high performance electric boat? You know what, I, uh, I had a kid two years ago. Yeah, There's a sunshine in my life, you know, and I try to keep up with him right now. After doing a few long distance races, including the race to Alaska, I realized that we really need to start protecting the environment. We need to do something about it. I wanted to do something that will really preserve this water for the future, but I was not willing to sacrifice the performance. I truly believe that building a good electric boat and starting this whole electric revolution is not going to start by building something that goes at seven knots and has a 20 miles range. I'll put this boat against any other 20 foot gas powered boat and we're going to have a better hull shot and a better handling and a better performance than, than any of those boats. Now tell us about the, uh, the boat itself. This is a fully carbon fiber hull, right? Yeah, full carbon fiber sides, whole bottom, everything, including the dash. That gives us a very lightweight boat, but also a structure that is very, very stiff. Achieving performance, and, and you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about what performance is, right? It's not just the high speed, it's the handling, it's the whole shot, so how quickly the boat's gonna take off, how well it moves through the water. If we take our uh, weight of our battery, motor, cables, electronics, and whatnot, that adds up to about a weight of a 125 horsepower outboard. There are a few big advantages to electric power. One being torque. We need to play to our strength, and our strength over here with an electric motor is the instant torque. At one RPM, we have a full torque, and this is something you don't get out of the regular motor because they have to rev up pretty high to have a torque curve. We don't have a torque curve, we have a torque flatline. The top speed is somewhere around uh, 30 knots or thereabouts, and uh, uh, a range is 80 to 100 on this one. 30 knots isn't crazy fast for a powerboat, but it is faster than any other electric we've tested to date and I was curious how it felt behind the wheel. Would I be able to drive it for a minute? Oh yeah. Would you, would you mind? Yeah, no problem. Oh wow, that would be wicked. The last electric boat I drove had was a Torquedo 2.0R and it had, I don't know, five horsepower? Well, this is also a Torquedo system, but you might see a slight difference in performance when you're gonna put the hammer down. And uh, yeah, by all means, do it. All right. Give her go. all she's got, Captain. So first off, right away is, the ride comfort. This is a small, very lightweight boat. And we're going into about a half a meter chop and it's just extremely comfortable. Now, we are only doing about 16 miles an hour, but still, that's very surprising. Acceleration, it's instant. It's instant. That best thing about People ask electric. us about like, you know, how, what's the whole shot? Like, I don't know, somewhere between one or two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> the handling is unlike any other boat I've driven. It feels extremely tight and is very responsive to the wheel while holding its line in a turn very well. You also feel somewhat isolated from wave impacts. It's like driving a piece of billet aluminum, only lighter, with almost no wake. And charge cycles from a lifespan point of view? Battery is warranted for nine years. You have a nine year warranty on the battery? Yes, sir. And that is about uh, 10,000 uh, uh, charge cycles on the battery. So 10,000 yeah. days. 10,000 really? days on the water. And then there are the fuel costs to consider. 
This, in average, in the United States, costs $5.50 to recharge this battery. Now, I will give you $5.50 and you can go see how much marine fuel you're going to buy and I can guarantee you, you're not going to get 80 to 100 miles range out of it, which is what this boat gets. And the good thing is that we can recharge this boat with a 110 or 220, so whatever plug you're going to have, plug it in and you're good to go. Charging time at 15 amps on 110 is about 10 hours, so the system can fully charge overnight. But most marinas have 50 amps at 220 readily available. Like most electric vehicles on the road today, the Zin is not inexpensive. You are looking at 250,000 US to have one built this year, but each will be 100% unique, no two alike.